the Slater plate. Let me try this again so nothing falls off. But this is kind of what the Slater plate looks like. Uh, and it's got, uh, we'll go over in a minute. I'm going to open up in prayer real quick. Actually, who wants to open in prayer? I'm always opening in prayer. Yes, Gus is going to open. You want to open in prayer, yes, Chris? Yes, prayers are best. Or do you want me to open in prayer? Here, let's have Chris open in prayer yeah. since Gus and I are going to be doing the Passover, reading it. Okay. Asua Jesus, we praise you. Your people are here, and here you are here. Who Asua uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit in us. Oh, Lord Jesus, we praise you. And this day we come, we come to see what happened in the past and what is happening now. Asua is here. Thank you, Lord. And we praise you this time where I pray blessings to the people and this ministry now and Asua Jesus name holy holy one thank you Lord amen amen amen, amen. amen. praise the Lord I am going to make an announcement at the beginning right now and the end I know guys we may drop a few things along the way because the table is very small but we're trying our best here so yeah we're trying our best to keep everything in order but uh, I have an announcement to make. This is something very special to me. May 31st, Wednesday, May 31st at 7 p.m., I am going to be speaking at Faith Assembly of God in Poughkeepsie, New York. The Lord has brought me back full circle here because I was at this church 20 years ago when I was very ill and I helped run the young adults group there. And the Lord really started to cultivate my relationship, it was prophesied over me actually by somebody in this church about the Lord raising me up into a prophetic ministry. So this is very special to me. I thank Pastor Sam and his wife uh, mm -hmm. for asking us to speak. We yeah. are honored. So mark your calendars. Anyone can come out uh, uh, to listen. It is Faith Assembly of God in Poughkeepsie, New York. It's going to be Wednesday, May 31st at 7 p.m., we will actually make the announcement at the end of the broadcast as well. So praise the Lord for that. I'm very excited Thank about that. Okay. So we'll explain what's on the Seder plate very fast before we actually do the ceremonial lighting of the yeah, candle, which Gus is going to do and Chris is going to light when I tell him to. Chris, when I when I give you the okay. cue. So, oh, oh, Gus. Oh, good. Oh, we can use Gus's plate. Okay. So what they do is they do the egg. They do the parsley. The horseradish, this is called hamet. I believe it's called hametz, which is like the mortar. Actually, I'm going to double check this. And there goes my phone. I thought I did this on low. It's Clay. It's Clay's right hand man, Carter, actually, in the middle of the Passover. <laughs> so I will call Carter back. Let me put that on. I put. I put both of them on. Is that uh, chair set. Yes. Chair set? So basically. That is the haroset. This right here represents the mortar from the bricks. This is the roasted lamb shank bone. And then we have we have the marer, which is like a bitter herb. They normally use romaine lettuce. They call the bone actually the zaroa. And then you have the carpus, which is the parsley. So this is kind of your traditional Passover Seder plate, just so all of you can see what it looks like. Okay, thank you, Gus. You're welcome. Okay, now we are going to do first the lighting of the candle. And so, Chris, when Gus, start right here. yes, when Gus starts, you start lighting the candle, okay? Mm -hmm. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the universe, mm, who makes us holy with your misbot, mm. who commanded us to light festival candles. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the universe, who gave us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach the season of joy. 
Amen. 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 So we went over. We also have uh that we have bubbling grape juice on the table. We have matzah covered up, which we're going to go over because part of that's going to go in the api komen, which is the bag on top of the matzah. And so as we continue, I'm going to stop and explain some things because Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, was the Passover lamb. He is all over the Passover meal. It is so symbolic of him, so many parts of this meal. So we will stop and explain as we go forth. Okay, so next we're going to do the blessing of the wine. Now that we went over everything on the table, and this is where the Seder really begins, is the blessing of the wine. So I'm, I think I'm going to do the blessing of the wine. Gus and I are going to go back and forth here. And then we'll do the breaking of the matzah, which Gus will have to do so I can actually break the matzah and do what we are supposed to do with it. So the blessing over the wine. Okay, so everybody is going to raise their cup. And I'm going to say it in Hebrew first, and then I'm going to say it in English. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the universe, who has chosen us from all nations, raised us above all tongues, and made us holy with your mitzvah. Mitzvah is command. And you, Adonai, our God, have lovingly given us festivals for rejoicing, holidays and season for gladness. This festival of matzah, the season of our freedom, a holy gathering, a remembrance of the exodus from Egypt. For you have chosen and made us holy above all peoples, and your holy festivals in joy and gladness you granted us as a heritage. Blessed are you, Adonai, who makes holy Israel and the festive seasons. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the universe, who has kept us alive, sustained us, and brought us to this season. Now what you do is you take the cup and you drink it while reclining, because when you recline, you're relaxed because you've been delivered. Mm. You've been delivered you, from the bondage of Egypt. Thank you, Lord. If what the, I also make this to do, it's, it's to exaggerate our awareness of freedom and wealth. It is customary to recline, leaning to the left as the uh, the aristocracy did or uh, arist aristocracy did in ancient times so this is what they say in the haggadah this is actually a haggadah so this is what you read every passover everybody has it chris and gus have it as well there are different versions of the haggadah uh this one is a slightly more condensed although it does take about 45 minutes to go through everything okay now we have the washing of the hands which is called the yurahats so what we do is we wash our hands in a basin and then basically it's the symbolic act of preparation for the Seder and the Passover feast. Okay, since there's no meal served at this time, this is the actual Seder part of it and then they have the meal, the actual feast afterwards. So then we are going to just ceremonially wash our hands. I have paper towel here, so we're gonna wash our hands in the little basins and I have to thank our staff because they helped set all this up today and they did an absolutely beautiful and amazing job. And uh, we'd also like to thank Bounty Paper Towels who is going to be helping us right now dry our hands. Okay. This is sponsored by Bounty. <laughs> so this is the ceremonial washing of the hands. And then after we're done with that, yep, we can just put that on the floor for now. Everyone takes a vegetable other than the marrow, which is the bitter herb. So you're going to pick up some parsley, okay? We're going to pick up some parsley right now, and we're going to dip it in the salt water. So we're going to dip the, which represents the tears, all the tears they cried being in bondage in Egypt. So we're going to dip it in the salt water, and we're going to eat it. And we're going to re recite a prayer before we eat it. Okay. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech heolam barai parai ha adama. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, Creator of the universe, who creates the fruit of the earth, and then we eat. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we move to the breaking of the matzah. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have Gus recite it. But I'm going to take the matzah here and I'm going to uncover it, okay? So what you do is you break the middle matzah. I have it separated, actually. This is the afikomen. This is the bag. 
So it, there's three matzah here. So I'm going to take the middle matzah, which is right here, and we're going to uncover it, and I'm going to break it in two, and then we're going to have guts. Start here with the mitzvah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to break here. this, yep, in two. The smaller part is going to go back and be covered. This larger part, hold on. I'm going to show you what to do with the larger part here because the larger part has to go back in the middle and be covered. And then the larger, this can go back for now like this. And then we're going to take the smaller part and we're going to wrap it or put it in the apicoma. Now I'm going to tell you something interesting about this before Gus recites. The matzah has... And I know we have a picture of the matzah up close, I think, that can be shown. The matzah is pierced and it is bruised. Jesus was bruised and pierced and broken. We just broke the matzah. After his body was broken, what happened to it? It was wrapped up. It was wrapped up in grave clothes. It was wrapped up just like we're wrapping up the matzah in the afikomen. And it was tucked away. So now it's been tucked away, the afikomen. And now we're going to have Gus recite. Right this is the matzah. This matzah is a symbol of affliction and poverty. The story of Passover tells us about the hardships and suffering that our ancestors endured. It reminds us of those who are in need today. So we say, whoever is hungry, come share our food and celebrate Passover. To those who are poor or oppressed, we pray for them and hope that the coming year will bring a better life for all. Okay. It Now we, we still have plenty of uh, grape juice left. So you normally you report, but we have plenty of it left. So that's okay. We can go right into this, Gus. I continue to read this. Mm -hmm. Why is the, the question, the four questions? You have to, you want me to say the Hebrew? Oh, yeah, you can say the Hebrew and I'll okay. say the English. How I'll say that? the Hebrew. Okay. <laughs> Ma nishtana halala haza mikol halilo. Why is this night different from all other nights? In what ways do you find this night different? And then the youngest at the table, which is me, <laughs> makes the following <laughs> statement. And then gives four examples of how this night is different. In four ways do I find this night different. Shevcho halalot anu ochin shemetz. Umatza halayila haza kulo matza. On all other nights. We yeah. may eat hametz and matza, but on this night, only matza. Shevcho halalot anu ochin sha'ar yirachu. On all other nights, we may eat many vegetables, but on this night, only maror. Shevcho halelo en anu mat bilin afilu pa'am echat halayila haza shete famimin. On all other nights, we don't dip even once. But on this night, we dip twice. So we have one more here. Shivcho halelot anu ochlin ben yoshvin uvin mi sobin halayila haza kulanu msubin. On all other nights, we eat either sitting up or reclining. But on this night, we all recline. The four questions are, in fact, not four questions at all. They are four statements that clarify the main question of the Seder. Why is this night different from all other nights? This night is different from all other nights because on this night, we tell the story of Passover as inscribed in the book of Exodus. This night is also different because we participate in rituals that have been observed at Passover Seders for centuries by our Jewish ancestors. We remind ourselves every year at this time that we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt and God took us out with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. 
If God had not liberated our ancestors from Egyptian slavery, then we and our children and our children's children might still be slaves in the land of Egypt. Even if we know the story well, and I've told it many times, it is essential to be reminded of the details so we don't forget. By recognizing the oppression of our enslaved ancestors, we gain a greater appreciation of the freedom we enjoy today. As we participate in the rituals of Seder, we should not only make sure the story of Passover is told and the significance of each component of the Seder is explained, but we should also engage the children in the proceedings. The children are encouraged to ask questions regarding the rituals of the evening. If they don't, the elders take on the role of teacher and explain using language appropriate to each child's ability to understand. So they have a story here called The Four Children, Gus, which I will have you right here read. The Four Children. The Four Children. The wise, wicked, simple, and too young to ask. Most of us have shown qualities of the four children in our lives at one time or another because we all learn in different ways and at our own pace when sharing the meaning of the Passover with children. It's important to approach them in a way that best suits their ever evolving personalities and abilities to learn. The wise child, the wise child or studious child likes to study and analyze the details. Give this child the tools to discover the meaning of Passover on their own and explain them to them why it's important to retell the story of Exodus each year. The wicked child. The wicked child or rebellious child probably wants little to do with Passover, and they exclude themselves from getting involved. A typical response can be, what's this got to do with me? Explain the Passover. Explain that Passover is a Explain the Passover, the celebration of the freedom we all enjoy. Since the child usually lacks empathy, ask questions that get them involved. Like, how would it be? How would it feel for you if you were a slave and freed by God? The simple child. For a simple child who is easily overwhelmed, give a simple explanation. Don't confuse them with details. Instead, tell them the basic facts of the story and explain the general meaning of Passover in terms they can easily understand. The child too young to ask. Maybe they're too young to form a question or unable to ask, unable to ask one because they, are, they don't understand. Perhaps this child of God may be an adult that lacks the capacity to speak or lives with someone other, other, uh, some other disability. Treat them with love, understanding, and obedient patience, and explain the Passover, the meaning of Passover, in terms that they can relate to. Try telling stories and singing songs and make it festive, a festive time. Which is interesting. It's nice they put that in there to include children in it so children can understand and celebrate the Passover as well. Now, we toast to our endurance as a people. So, we have the matzah covered. <coughs> And we have the wine glasses lifted. I'm going to take a sip for a second. Okay. Throughout the ages, we have endured. For not only has one risen against us to annihilate us, but in every generation, they rise against us to annihilate us. But Adonai, the Holy One of Blessing, rescues us from their hand. Now we put down the wine cup and we uncover the matzah. So now we uncover the matzah right there we'll put this on the floor let my people go we weren't always slaves in egypt we became slaves and this and there's great singing and the story of how we became slaves to the pharaohs of egypt and ultimately how we were freed is really the basis of the story of passover it's a part of history that belongs to all of us by telling the story year after year we're ensuring that we'll never forget our oppression or our freedom as with most of religious history, the story has been passed on from generation to generation. And tonight, especially if there are children present, you're perpetuating an important ritual. Many years ago in the land of Egypt, Joseph, the son of Jacob and Rachel, or Yaakov, which is Jacob in the Hebrew, was sold into slavery by his brothers. Joseph was killed and, in, and in, oh, uh, Joseph was skilled and intelligent and soon became an official in the court of the Egyptian pharaoh. 
Joseph could interpret dreams, which he sometimes used to predict the future. He offered the Pharaoh his prediction of an upcoming famine, which the Pharaoh heeded. Because Joseph's timely advice saved the land from a great famine, Pharaoh invited them to stay when Joseph's family came to Egypt searching for food. They lived in peace for many years, actually in the area of Goshen, and became known as Israelites. Let me go with mm -hmm. it. Years later, a new Pharaoh came to rule. He did not remember Joseph and all he had done for the Egyptians. He saw the Israelites' population was growing rapidly and feared that in war they might side with the enemy and become a danger to Egypt. To remove this problem of the Israelites, Pharaoh enslaved them. He forced them to work hard, building his cities and palaces, baking bricks and carrying stones in the desert heat. They knew neither peace nor rest, only misery and pain. To limit their population, Pharaoh decreed every baby born to an Israelite woman shall be drowned in the river. Yep, every boy. Mm -hmm. In an effort to save the, their baby, Amram and Yochaved. and Yochaved, a Jewish slave couple, hid him in a basket on the riverbank. That's Moses, right? mm -hmm. When Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, came down to the river to bathe, she found the baby and decided to take him home to the palace. This princess's name <clears throat> named the baby Moses, which means brought out of the water. Because she needed a nurse to feed and care for the baby, the princess looked for a Jewish nurse. Yaakov's daughter, Miriam, was hiding by the river watching, came out and told the princess that she knew of a nurse. She ran home and brought Yaakov back to the princess and revealing that she was really Moses's not revealing it was Moses's mother, Yaakov became Moses's nurse and was able to care for him throughout the, his childhood. Moses, being adopted adopted son of the princess, would have lived a rich life in the Pharaoh's palace, but he could not bear to see his people suffer for slave as slaves. One day he came upon an Egyptian taskmaster who was beating an Israelite slave. <clears throat> in a fit of rage, Moses beat the Egyptian to death. His crime soon became known, and Moses was forced to leave the homeland and flee into the desert. Wandering around the desert, he came upon a family of shepherds in the land of Midian. He was taken and became a shepherd himself. One day, while tending to his sheep, Moses came upon a bush that was on fire. Although it was burning, it was not being consumed. He heard God's voice coming from the bush, telling Moses to go back to Egypt and free his people from slavery and lead them out of Egypt. Because Moses was merely a shepherd, he asked God, how may I accomplish this great task? I am but a lowly shepherd, and I am, of, I am impaired of speech. God replied, go forth to Egypt with your wooden staff, I will be by your side and the Pharaoh will be forced to free your people. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to get into the plagues. And Moses returned to Egypt and went to see the Pharaoh with his brother Aaron and his as his spokesperson. Let my people go, Moses demanded, but Pharaoh had a hardened heart and refused. Through Moses, God brought forth ten plagues on the people of Egypt. The plagues at first amused the Pharaoh, but soon frightened him. The Pharaoh promised to free the slaves several times, but God hardened the Pharaoh's heart many times, and each time he agreed to free the Israelite slaves, Pharaoh went back on his word. And then there's actually a song you can sing on page 28 called Go Down Moses that sometimes they actually sing. Chris is going to do that. Before. Chris will do that later, yes. <laughs> After the, later, yes. After the ninth plague, God said to Moses, I will bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Toward midnight, I will go forth among the Egyptians, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the millstones, and all the firstborn of the cattle. And there shall be a loud cry in all the land of Egypt, such as has never been or will ever be again. 
God then instructed Moses to tell his people to take a lamb from among their flocks and sacrifice it at twilight, taking some of the blood to paint a mark on the two doorposts and the lintel of the door. So the two posts and the lintel, which is exactly where the blood of Jesus was shed. His head would have been right here, which would have been the lintel and the two arms on either side of the door. Moses was further instructed by God to have his people roast the lamb over a fire and eat it with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs that same night. Want me to finish here? Yeah. You okay. At midnight, God brought forth ten, forth the tenth and most devastating plague, the killing of the firstborn. In every Egyptian household, the firstborn child suddenly took ill and died. But the plague passed over the homes of the Israelite slaves. It was then that the Pharaoh finally agreed to free the Israelites. While we celebrate the freeing of the Israelites from slavery, God has instructed us to take no pleasure in the suffering of the Egyptians. To commemorate their suffering, each person dips their little finger into their wine and places a drop on their plate, which will be in here, as we recite the ten plagues that God brought down on Egypt. Or you could do it in the middle of your plate here. So you dip it, and we're going to recite. I'm going to recite. So every, you have to dip it every time. Ready? First one. Blood. Right here. You, you put it on the plate. Yep, blood. Then you do it again. Frogs. Lice. Wild beasts. Cattle. Cow. Boils. Boil. Hail. Hail. Locusts. Locusts. So shit. Darkness. 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 And the killing of the and firstborn. The firstborn. And that's the ten. Moses did not trust the Pharaoh. He told his people to quickly pack whatever they could carry, and Moses led them out of Egypt into the desert. With no time to bake their bread, the people carried their kneading bowls and their dough wrapped in clo cloaks upon their shoulder. Once free and in the desert, they baked the dough in the, on the hot rocks in Mitzvah. Matzah, rather. But once again, the Pharaoh changed his mind and sent his soldiers to capture the Israelites. As Moses' army, as Pharaoh's army caught up with the Israelites at the Red Sea, God told Moses to hold up his wooden staff. Suddenly, a huge wind came up and the Red Sea parted, allowing all the freed slaves to pass. Once all the Israelites were safely across, Moses again held up his staff, and the waters closed upon Pharaoh's soldiers, killing all of them. Finally, the Israelites were truly free. Okay. As a way of giving praise to God and showing appreciation for all the blessings given us, we recite, Dianu, it would have been enough. And we are grateful. That's what Dayanu means. Chris, can you say Dayanu? Dayanu. Okay, because we're going to say it quite a bit. Now, we're going to read each line. And after each line, we're going to say Dayanu. Okay. Had God brought us out of Egypt, but not executed judgments against the Egyptians, it would have been enough. Dayanu. Had God executed judgments against them, but not upon their gods, it would have been enough. Dayanu. Had God executed judgments against their gods, but not slain their firstborn, it would have been enough. Dianu. Dianu. Had God slain their firstborn, but not given us their wealth, it would have been enough. Dianu. Dianu. Had God given us their wealth, but not split the sea for us, it would have been enough. Dianu. Dianu. Had God split the sea for us, but not let us through it on dry land, it would have been enough. Dianu. Dianu. Had God let us through it on dry land, but not drowned our oppressors in it, it would have been enough. Dianu. Had God drowned our oppressors in it, but not provided for our needs in the desert for 40 years, it would have been enough. Dianu. Had God provided for our needs in the desert for 40 years, but not fed us the manna, it would have been enough. Dianu. Had God fed us the manna, but not given us the Sabbath, it would have been enough. Dianu. Had God given us the Sabbath, but not brought us to Mount Sinai, it would have been enough. Dianu. Had God brought us to Mount Sinai, but not given us the Torah, it would have been enough. 
Diane knew. Had God given us the Torah, but not brought us into the land of Israel, it would have been enough. Diane knew. Thank you, God, for all the favors you have bestowed upon us. You mm -hmm. led us out of Egypt, slavery, and oppression. You brought the plagues against the Egyptians, slew their firstborn, and brought us their wealth. You split open the Red Sea, then drowned our oppressors. Thank you for taking care of us in the desert for 40 years. You fed us manna, gave us the Sabbath, then brought us to Mount Sinai to give us the Torah and your commandments. Thank you, O God, for bringing us to the land of Israel, making us a great nation. Hallelujah. Okay, so the matzah now is covered. We're going to recover the matzah for now because the matzah is now covered. Okay. We join together to glorify and bless God for bringing us out of slavery and bondage, for granting us our freedom. And for turning our sorrow into joy, we give thanks to God for helping mm. us reach this night Jesus. so that we may carry out the rituals of the Seder, mm. eating the offerings and symbolic sacrifices while singing praise for our redemption and freedom. Okay. Amen. Blessed are you. Adonai, our God, creator of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Okay. Mm -hmm. We lean to the left, and we recline, and we drink. Right. Here at Symbols of Passover. Mm -hmm. One of Judaism's, Judaism's greatest scholars, Rabbi Gamaliel, decreed that the Seder is not to complete unless we explain the meaning of the three main symbols of Pesach, Matzah, and Morah. Mm -hmm. Morah, right? Okay, so the Pesach is the roasted bone. Right. This bone represents the mighty arm of God that convinced the Egyptians to free the slaves. It also represents the Paschal lamb that was used as a special sacrifice in the days of an ancient temple in Jerusalem. And also represents the Passover lamb himself, Yeshua mm -hmm. HaMashiach, Jesus uh -huh. Christ. Amen. Okay. So yep, so I have to raise the whole plate. So I have to take the whole plate and hold it up. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech heolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the universe who brings forth bread from the earth. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech heolam asher kitshenu bit mitzvotav Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the yes. universe, who makes us holy with your commandments holy. and has instructed us in eating of matzah. Okay, now we, I have to take from the top two matzah and give everybody a piece of each. So I'm going to break the top one. This is from the top. Here you go. Here's your piece from the top. And then I also, the top two matzah. Okay, so this is one. And this is that half, remember, that we put back to the other half is in the apikomen. So I'm going to give some to Gus and Chris, and I'm going to take the rest. So here you go. And then I'm going to take my portion here. Okay, I'm going to take this, and then I'm going to take from the top matzah. Hold on here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we're going to put this back. I'm going to put it on here for now. Okay. Hold it up and you recite us. We now take this matzah for not only is it commanded in the Torah by God, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, but this matzah sim also symbolizes the unleavened bread our ancestors ate while in the desert and in their great haste while fleeing Egypt. 
because they did not have time to allow the dough to rise. They were forced to bake their dough before it leavened and eat it in a form of form of hard, flat crackers, which we now call matzah. And now we're going to eat it reclining to the left side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to take the blessing over the bitter herbs, which is the mar and the haroset. So the mar is actually the horseradish. And the, the haroset is the apple mixture that represents the martyr. So what we're going to do is take that. And we're actually going to make a little sandwich here. So we're going to take the matzah. We're going to take some matzah. And here you have some utensils. You're going to take some of the. Horseradish. You're going to take some of the. Actually, no, the bitter herb. You're going to take some of the. This. The romaine lettuce. And you're going to take some of the apple mixture. And you're going to make yourself a little matzo sandwich. And we're going to hold on to this for a minute. So see, I've made myself a little matzo sandwich here. And I'm going to keep that in the middle. And I'm going to recite the blessing. Over the morrow. Baruch ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Olam Asher Kitshenu Bit Mitzvotav Bit Zivanu Al Achilat Moror. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the universe, who makes us holy with your mitzvah, which is your commandment, and has commanded us concerning the eating of the morrow. This is called Hillel Sandwich or the Korech. It is written in the Torah, they shall eat it the Passover sacrifice or the Paschal lamb with matzah and bitter herbs. Rabbi Hillel, a revered scholar who lived while the temple still stood, used to combine the Passover offerings of the Paschal lamb, matzah and mar, and eat them together in the sandwich. Since we no longer have a Paschal lamb at our Seder table, we now use matzah, mar, and haroset to make the sandwich. So now we make the, we made the sandwich you can also actually, if you want, put a little bit of horseradish on it, too, if you're brave. We have the horseradish right here. So if you mm -hmm. want to take a tiny, and I mean a tiny bit because this will clear your sinuses, mm -hmm. and put it on, it, we can use both, and we eat the sandwich together. And what is the meaning of the root <coughs> bitter bird? Chris, you really like horseradish, don't you? The bitter herb is like all the bitter years it represents yeah. in Egypt. And we eat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, we're going to hold up the third glass of wine. Chris made himself a very big sandwich over there. Matzo sandwich. How is it? Good? Yep, and we're going to recite. I'm going to recite. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Heolam Barai Prai Hagafen. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, creator of the universe who creates the fruit of the vine. And we drink. Now, usually at the table, there is another cup left for Elijah the prophet. And so the leader of the Seder holds the cup up of Elijah the prophet. So there's usually another cup here, and this is what they say. I hear someday. Mm -hmm. someday, oh. mm -hmm. someday the prophet Elijah will return to earth to lead the way for an age of peace in the spirit of Passover. As a celebration of freedom, we welcome Elijah into our home and to our Seder. Mm -hmm. Some even open going. the front door and leave it open for him. They leave a plate out for him at their table as well. Okay. Enter Elijah the prophet. 
may you soon come and issue in the great age of peace. And there's actually another song that's on page 29 called Eliyahu Hanavi, which you can actually sing as well. Okay, the fourth cup of wine. I'm going to raise our wine again, or our, our sparkling grape juice here. Thank you, Welches. Baluch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Heolam Borai Parai Hagafen. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, creator of the universe, who creates the fruit of the wine. Okay, we recline. And we drink. Okay, and then we go. It is traditional in many families to serve hard-boiled eggs. Here's our hard-boiled egg on the plate. Came from our chickens this morning at the sanctuary. Dipped in salt water at this time. So we take the hard-boiled egg and we dip it in the salt water like this. Okay, we put it back on the plate. As a symbol of spring and the beginning of new life, as with many of the symbols used for the Seder, the egg has another meaning. It reminds us of the Jewish midwives who showed bravery in refusing to follow the Pharaoh's demand that every baby boy born to an Israelite woman shall be drowned in the river. This brave action ensured the survival of the Jewish nation. At the conclusion of the meal, the Afikomen, which is what we hid away, wrapped in, wrapped up and hid away, that piece of matzah, is found by the leader of the Seder, often by buying hints from the children. The children normally hide the afikomen, who hid it. It is now distributed among all participants to be eaten. This, uh, this dessert represents the sweetness of freedom to be enjoyed for the rest of the evening. Um, also, it's, it also, at, at the conclusion, it says all Jews are invited to one day return to the promised land of Israel and celebrate Passover as our ancestors did. It is the desire and hope of many Jews to someday make that journey and make Seder in Jerusalem. It is in that spirit that all present together and say, so I'm going to say it in Hebrew and then we're going to say, we're going to say next year in Jerusalem in English. It's La Shana Haba Birye Rishu Shala. Shalah Yim, next, next year, year in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And now we're going to take now the Afikomen. I'm going to tell you something very interesting about the Afikomen. The children hide the Afikomen. And what happened was when the leaders find it, when the leader finds it, the child that hid it, he's going to say to them, what do you want? Because I found the Afikomen you hid. Now the Afikomen just as Jesus came out of the grave after three days, is now taken out from being hidden away and distributed. Because once Jesus rose, we had access to Almighty God through Jesus Christ. So it's taken pieces of it, distributed. But the leader says, what would you like as a prize for this? And say the child says, oh, I want a bike. Well, he'll say, well, I don't have a bike right now. But I'm going to give you this dollar bill as a promise that the bike is coming. Mm -hmm. Just like when Jesus rose, he gave the promise that the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the gift, because mm -hmm. he asked what gift they want. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit, the gift is coming. Mm -hmm. And so that is uh, what is behind the afikomen. And so everybody that eats the afikomen. as a way to conclude and symbolize that Jesus Christ was hidden away and then for three days he laid there in the tomb and then he was taken out and rose again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if anybody wants to hear me sing in Hebrew, but <laughs> I don't think later. Later. Well, I will read the lyrics. Great juice. Mm -hmm. I will read the lyrics though to go down Moses for you. When Israel was in Egypt's land. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say it, and you guys are gonna say, let my people go. You're gonna tell. Yes. You're going to do the second verse. Mm -hmm. yes. 
When Israel was in Egypt's land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand. Let, let my people go. go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt. Let no, O Pharaoh, let my people go. Thus saith the Lord, bold Moses said, Let, let my, my people, people go. go. If not, I'll smite your people dead. Let, let my, my people, people go. go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. No, no, Pharaoh, no. Let, let my, my people, people go. go. As Israel stood by the waterside, let <laughs> my people go. By God's command, it did divide. Let, let my, my people, people go. go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell Pharaoh, let, let my, my people go. go. So that's the first song. Remember I said there were songs? That was the first song, actually, that you go. could sing. So that concludes our Passover Seder. I'm going to tell you a few more interesting things about Passover. Is that, interestingly enough, we light the candles. Initially, Jesus is the light of the world. So this is how we start, by the lighting of the candles. Uh, we also, actually, I wanted to remember to do this. We're going to take communion now, actually. Because this is what Yeshua HaMashiach did with his disciples before he was arrested at the Garden of Gethsemane and beaten and given up to be crucified. So we're going to take a piece of the matzah. You have a piece? Okay. Ready? Well, who's going to, am I going to do this? Am I going to yeah, do communion? Maybe, okay, maybe I'm going to do communion. Break and share yours with us? Yes, yes, I'll break it and share it. The same bread. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus was with his disciples, in that room, that that room that he had uh, he had asked the disciples to secure, and they had this last meal together, what is known as the Last Supper. It was really a Passover meal with them before he became the Passover lamb. He took the bread before them, and he broke it, and he said that this represented his body. It was broken for us. It was beaten, bruised, crushed, and pierced for our sin and iniquity. Because we had a debt we could never, ever pay. And Yeshua HaMashiach was the word became flesh, came to the earth, and dwelt among us to pay that debt. He was the Passover lamb. And we eat of it and remember what Jesus Christ did for us and the Lord God did because he so loved the world. And then he took the cup. He said this represented the cup of his suffering, the blood that was poured out and shed for us when he was beaten and he was nailed to a cross at Calvary and he died a brutal death to purchase us that day back to our father in heaven. And a great victory was won over the enemy that day at the cross and we were redeemed and we drink of it and remember to what Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach did for us, Lord, and you did because you so loved the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anyone have anything to say as our Seder, our Passover Seder concludes? I don't believe so. I think uh, anybody that's doing this for the first time, it is amazing how it tells us everything. It's what they did. They changed our calendar. They changed everything to set this off so that we wouldn't be telling our children. And sharing it with them, carrying it down from generation to generation. That's why it's so important. I just pray we get back to doing this all, all the time now. Yes. Well, it it, it is so important for <clears throat> Christians to keep the Passover as well. This is one Amen. of the festivals the Lord wants everyone to keep. And there is a special blessing for those who keep it and honor it before God. It puts you in right standing before the Lord, too, because you're honoring what he did for our Jewish brothers and sisters, delivering them from Egypt. And we are adopted and grafted into that family. I will tell you, too, that uh, people think, why was the 10th plague so harsh on Egypt with the loss of the firstborn? And what it goes back to is the blood sh uh, Pharaoh shed when he uh, when he ordered that all baby boys born were to be thrown into the Nile. Mm -hmm. All baby boys born were to be thrown and cast into the Nile. And that was so barbaric and so horrible. And Moses was spared of that to be raised up to 
in Pharaoh's own palace under his nose, the very man that would challenge him and the Lord would use to deliver the Jews from the bondage of Egypt, grew up in his own household being reared by Pharaoh's own resources. And so that went unatoned for that blood. Pharaoh was unrepentant. He was unrepentant what he did. So by the time, it took about a year's time for these 10 plagues to take place. God, even in his mercy, allowed Pharaoh a whole year to wake up, repent, repent and stop what he was doing and let the people of Israel go. So it took about a year for all 10 plagues to occur. And that 10th one, was because of what happened at the Nile. And it was also meant to break the back of Egypt, to let the Jews go, their families, their livestock, and for the Egyptians to basically give them provisions for their journey. Yeah. Uh, and so that is why we see that transpire. And the Lord waited till the very end to do that plague because he was merciful and he was giving Pharaoh time, hoping he'd, give in before he'd, hoping he'd repent and give in and let them go. And the Lord would have left Pharaoh alone. Uh, and, and realizing that Pharaoh then with his chariots um, got his whole army and went back after them because of pride. And when it came down to the Red Sea moment that happened, that we see, and the Lord parted the sea, Pharaoh had thought Baal parted the sea for him. Pharaoh actually thought Baal parted the sea and delivered the Jews up to him. That was the trap that was set when it was really the Lord who parted the sea to bring deliverance to the Jews and judgment to Egypt at the same time. There are times the Lord brings deliverance and judgment at the same time in a situation and this is one of the times we see that actually happen in Egypt. So it is a wonderful thing in the eyes of God for us to keep the Passover, remember the Passover, celebrate with our Jewish brothers and sisters. For those of you who have done this with us for the first time, we hope you really enjoyed it. Um, we did a concise version for you. Uh, in order so that you were going to be able to follow along and understand what was going on. Um, and it would be easier for everybody to understand doing it with us. So we thoroughly hope you enjoyed this. Mm. We most definitely did. I sure did. We sure did. Praise the Lord. Um, once again, um, I'm going to announce that uh, May 31st at 7 p.m., it's a Wednesday, I'm going to be speaking at Faith Assembly of God in Poughkeepsie, New York. So we are very much looking forward to that. We are excited about it. Uh, and we will put it up on social media so you will see it as well. Missy has been in here completely passed out on the floor. Mm -hmm. Missy has enjoyed, right? You've enjoyed the Passover as well, haven't you? Yeah, she's totally exhausted from training today. Uh, she's been very good. And we left the birds in for obvious reasons, because if they flew on the table in the middle of candles lit, we might have had a disaster on our hands. So the birds have been locked up the whole time and singing in the other part of my office. So thank you to everyone yeah. for joining us. Hag Pasach or Hag Samiach, happy Passover. God bless you. God bless our Jewish brothers and sisters out there. We celebrate with you. Um, and we thank everybody for joining us tonight. So God bless everyone. Keep the faith. Shalom. We love you. Shalom. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter six. This Wednesday is Grace Out Loud instead. So this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. because Marty has to travel, we will be doing Grace Out Loud. So we'll be putting that out as an announcement on social media as well. But I thought I'd put it up here. And that's that's it. That concludes our Passover. Happy Passover, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. See you on Wednesday. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Hello, everyone. This is Amanda Grace, and I wanted to tell you, if you are interested in where you should invest financial matters, if precious metals, if gold and silver is something that you should invest in, 
who should be a part of your portfolio, please go to bh-pm.com. That is bh-pm.com. Beverly Hills Precious Metals. Andrew Sorcini, who has been on Art of Grace before, he loves to answer our viewers' questions, is more than happy to guide you and to answer your questions and to help you in those financial matters. So please go to bh-pm.com today. Thank you, everyone. God bless. You want to support an amazing patriot that's doing so much for our country and be a blessing, you can go to MyPillow.com and use promo code ARK, A-R-K, to save up to 66% or sometimes more off of all MyPillow products. They are so much more than just pillows. They have amazing bathrobes, they have sheets, they have slippers, they of course have pillows, and they even have dog beds. And I will tell you a fun fact, Noble, our pig at the animal sanctuary that many of you know and love, has indeed slept on a MyPillow dog bed. So if you'd like to be a blessing, go to MyPillow.com and use promo code ARC. God bless everyone. If you are looking for an excellent doctor, if you are looking to get healthier, if you are looking for guidance, go to Sherwood.tv forward slash Amanda Grace. Dr. Mark Sherwood and his lovely wife, Dr. Michelle, have the Functional Medical Institute in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Both myself and my husband, Chris, and let me tell you, God bless Dr. Sherwood because Chris was a top nut to crack on this. But Chris is finally on board and we are both patients of this. I have to tell you, they have helped us tremendously. They also have an amazing line of products that are excellent for your health and can help you get your health back on track. So if you would like to make an appointment with them or you want to go see uh, what they are all about, what products they have, you can go to Sherwood.tv forward slash Amanda Grace. If you would like to grow your own food with what we see going on right now in the world with not only food supplies, but what they are doing to our food, you can go to amandagracegrows.com. These are amazing hydroponic growers. In fact, we have one in our parrot room, and this is an indoor one we have where you can grow food all year round, actually. Vegetables all year round. And we are doing that actually for our birds and our animals at our sanctuary. They also have outdoor ones. They actually yield 30% more and grow the vegetables three times faster. So if you would like to learn more, go to amandagracegrows.com. God bless. And I have to tell you something, they work. It is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and, and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I yeah. tried the pain patches and yeah, I gave them I to my uh, VP of operations also, Ronnie. And she said they worked as well. She was yeah. quite shocked, actually, but she said they worked so, and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes your brain waves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby, actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously <laughs> healing him. He has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I walked him out and wow, he's boom. And he got power. I said, no way. And I don't know. I said, Amanda, what? What did you do to him? To Toby? <laughs> So it's good. Hello, everyone. It's Amanda Grace. I'm coming to you today to talk to you about Reawaken America. I have been humbled and honored to be a part of Reawaken America since April 2021, when the first one was had at Rima Bible College in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I have to say, I have watched so many amazing moments happen for the glory of God at Reawaken America. And seeds get planted in the lives of those that are still seeking the Lord. 
We have seen many people uh, get set free, healed, delivered. Uh, We love to pray over people at Reawaken America. Um, I have prayed with so many uh, amazing people, which include Marty Grisham from Loudmouth Prayer, Prayer, Pastor Todd Coconado, uh, who also deals in deliverance as well. And it has been uh, an honor and a privilege to pray for so many people, to be able to minister to them, for my husband Chris to be able to minister as well, and uh, for, for Clay and General Flynn to allow me to to even speak there, to even speak and, and speak what the Lord has to say. People need the word of the Lord in this hour. That is what they need. Uh, and so Reawaken America has been a chance for people to come and not only hear the word of the Lord um, and hear biblical teaching and be prayed for, but also to get necessary information they need because the word of God says it is the knowledge of the truth that will set you free. Um, And so it's been an incredible experience for us. We hope to see you at upcoming events uh, that are coming up this year. uh, And we are excited to see you there. God bless everyone. This is one of the greatest movements I've ever seen and been a part of. I literally go to President Trump's rallies. I speak there. I speak on his bus tours. This reawakened tour is literally what it means. It has reawakened the American heart. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the goal, you know the the thing. We will shut you down, we will cite you, and if we need to, we will arrest you, and we will take you to jail, period. I wasn't thinking of the Bill of Rights when we did this. But no amendment, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. God actually spoke to me. He spoke about sacredness. He said to me, Kim, what I place in many, many people is sacred. And if anybody touches what is sacred to me, then it is the end.